Well, I'm back with the Victrola 16 once again. This is the machine that's been thoroughly bubbled. All the carvings scraped off and sanded off it. The original finish gone. Probably poly on there. Who knows? Missing parts. Broken leg. <laughs> so, of course, I uh, serviced the motor and rebuilt the reproducer right away. Immediately. Uh, let's see. Motor's in nice shape. Give it that much. Three nice springs in there. Really weren't even that dirty. Yeah, they, the grease was a little dry, but still greasy. You know, I guess you could say. Uh, I did have to replace the friction leather, and now, as you can see, the knob is properly where it should be. Well, that doesn't really have a place to be, but it was screwed all the way down. And uh, there's no way you can get an adjustment properly with the knob completely screwed down. It's just not going to work. You have to have some room to move. Otherwise, you know, when you use a stroboscope to set it, you have to have some adjustment on that. So now it does have adjustment. We took care of that. The reproducer is the gold exhibition. That's all we built. So we tightened up the tone arm. I'm not worried about the uh, replacement um, felt on there. That's, that's okay. Uh, let's see, what else? Nothing else really. You know, there's only so much you could do with a machine that's been bubbled as bad as this one. But you know what? It is a good player now. It does play very well. So at least that much has been taken care of. And yes, I replaced the three missing felt washers that are always gone. Well, not always, but a lot of times they are when someone's been playing with the machine as this one had been. They took the felt washers out, threw them away, figured, ah, those don't need to be there. Yeah, they do. They do. And that's why the crank is now perfectly centered. Yes, the escutcheon is broken. I know, I see that. That was because it wasn't at the correct angle due to the lack of felt washers for who knows how many decades. But now, once I find a replacement for that, it'll screw right in there perfectly. Not that I'm going to go out of my way to find one. But I could have one of my parts spin. I'm not worried about the, uh, the auto stop. That's so badly bent up, I'm, I'm not even going to screw around with that. Never liked those things anyway. I can uh, get up and shut off the machine on my own. Yeah, somehow I still have that capability. Okay, we have Waltzing the Blues. Obviously a waltz by the Victor Arden Phil... Omen and oh, I'm sorry, Victor Arden Phil Omen and their orchestra. Did I say Victor Orchestra? But no, it is not. Okay, we can at least hear it play.
<laughs> well, we might as well play side B. I forgot to bring more appropriate records with me today for this machine. But I do have a couple bluebirds over there. I'm meaning to try, and playing them once is not going to destroy them. It's what this machine is good for. Playing records. That's it. Not much to look at, but it will function. So one thing about these machines, they could be beat to death, but you can always bring them back to life. To play records, maybe they won't look all that great, unless you put a whole lot of work into the cabinet, but great it's too late with this one, because... They took the carvings right off. The only way to put them back on is to get another cabinet, bust it up, and glue the pieces back. I don't know. Let's see what those bluebirds got for us. I've been a little disappointed in those records lately because I have seem to have an album that is completely shot, full of shot records. These don't look that healthy either. Racing with the Moon. Of course, that is Vaughn Monroe and his orchestra. Not really appropriate for this era machine, which is 1913, but 
there were plenty of Victrolas still in use well into the 1940s and early 50s. Not everybody ran out and bought an electrically amplified machine overnight. After all, not many could afford it. And these machines did stay in service playing this kind of records too. Whether or not you'll damage them long term, probably will. If you play them a lot, maybe that's how this one got screwed up, if it is screwed up. But playing it once, nah, you're okay there. We're just testing them, that's all, or I'm testing them. See if they're any good. I was just a tad loud. Probably should have brought the tiny needles. Uh, but that played well, actually. Despite the scuffs, you never can tell until you actually play them how they're going to sound. Uh, you go to my head. Mott Haven, radio sale in the Bronx. This came out of the Bronx. It didn't travel too far. It does look kind of scratched up and, well, we will see. So you think we got a fourth play out of this? Got three already with some worn records. Think there's a fourth in them springs? Don't know. They were original Victor Springs, although they were in excellent condition. They might have a fourth play. You never 
Tent tail to your try, I guess. If we lose it in the middle, I'll just wind it up. Probably would do five, but I'm not going to push it that far. It's cold in here, and I know the grease is thick because I just put the grease in there. So, but this is not only Victrola, uh, Victor's largest Victrola of this era, at least for the home, it also has the largest springs. Three of them in this case. Later on, they got four, but in this era is three, but they're big springs. Oh, you know what? Let's try side B. I can't face the music. And who was that anyway? Larry Clinton and his orchestra. B. Wayne. Vocal refrain by B. Wayne. Okay. Well, I'll give it a wind. I don't like losing power in the middle of a record. Because then I gotta get up. And there is no limit to how lazy I can be. Such a shame they had to butcher this machine. But, as a player, you can't beat it. Especially now. I wasn't counting how many turns that was, but I guess I can go back and do it later. Let's see. And why am I bothering? 
But all this today, well, it's miserable and drizzly out. <coughs> Excuse me, so I don't want to go out there in that crap. And I'm waiting on three springs. No, I'm waiting on six springs I ordered for the HMVs. 101s and 102s, and I have three 101s that need springs. That have been waiting, I don't know, four or five years for me to get to them. Yeah, I work slow too. But uh, when they get here, next week, this week, who knows. We will see about getting in a few videos on those. She plays well, but that's to be expected when you bother to rebuild your reproducer and service the motor. These machines will play for an eternity, but you have to do your part. You can't haul them out of a garage or an attic or an old barn or even a corner of the living room where they've been sitting for 50, 60, 70, 100 years and just expect them to work. <laughs> they are mechanical devices. They do need maintenance, upkeep, servicing. You know, lubricants of the era were not that great. They tended to harden in over time and become flaky and crusty and basically solid rock. You do have to service everything. Use modern lubricants. You don't have to, actually. You can use Vaseline and powdered black graphite if you want to. Both items are available. But we have better alternatives today. Everybody has their own preferred way of doing it. For me, I use top quality lube all through it. You know, uh, this way I know that 100 years from now, whoever ends up servicing it again is not going to curse my memory because everything was glued shut and, and, you know, so on. Well, there we are with the 16. It is functional. There's nothing I can do about what was done to it. You know, but for a straight-up player, this is an excellent machine. Just for straight-up playing records. If that's your goal, then a machine like this is good to play with. Plus, if you happen on something like this at the flea market or whatever and get it as cheap as I got this one, I didn't happen upon it. A friend of mine down south did. 
this is a good type of machine to learn on because if you screw something up it's not the end of the world you know you spend i don't know six grand on a vic on a victor five or something like or six horn machine and you screw that up well you got a problem but something like this maybe you paid 75 or 100 or whatever you know there is a limit to how little you're going to be able to pay for something like even if it's been bubbled because you, you do have a reproducer here that is easily $120 on eBay once it's been rebuilt like this. And, you know, that, that's like $40 worth of parts or more just to, just to rebuild it. You have the motor, the three-spring motor, and that's 60 bucks. You have the crank. It, it's the female crank, so that, that's another $45. Someone needs it because they're hard to come by. You have little things like the needle container, the spent needle container, the tag, the hardware. All of those things cost money you know you, you can buy them on ebay and therefore a seller sees that they're not going to give you too big of a break they'll give you a break but not too big a one you know you could point that oh it's been sanded it's been polyed it's been they took all the carvings off yeah that's all true but the parts is that these knobs these knobs i don't believe are reproduced especially not the gold-plated ones and those are easily at least five dollars a piece maybe more i haven't looked lately you know the cabinet hinges the doors themselves even though they've been refinished they're not screwed up. They're in good shape. You know, there's, there's no peeling video. This whole machine, that's what just makes me want to cry. This whole machine has no veneer issues. None. Not even in the back, where they usually have something over the top of the lid. No veneer issues. You know, a lot of times you, you'll see the veneer peeling over here. Or it's gone. Or, uh, you know, the doors will be peeling off or on the sides, especially... There's a reason why they didn't use veneers on these machines just to be cheap or anything like that. Yes, the wood was expensive. Mahogany was expensive then too. They used it because it made for a straw. Laminated board on the sides and the back and the doors made them more resistant to warping due to changes in humidity and all of that. This was an era when air conditioning was non-existent. So in, in summer months, if you lived in a humid climate, especially down south or even up here, things would warp. They, they would split, warp, and everything else. They came up with the idea of using laminated board, and it works. This part isn't laminated, or this, but this is the, more, the large flat sections. So you need to find them. Unfortunately, 100 years of dampness will eventually cause the hide glue used in the laminating process to start to delaminate. And it starts to peel. That's fixable. You can fix that with clamps and all that glue if the piece is still there. But sometimes it's not always there. All right, I better cut this short. This will become another two- or three-part video. But there you go. There's the 16. If anybody wants to give it a home, contact me and we'll talk.